20 years since the first Pokemon ROM hack came out, Pokemon Brown version is a love letter to the original games, and the Rainbow Dev team has just dropped a huge update for the 20th anniversary of this ROM hack. But how does this game stand the test of time, and is it actually worth playing in 2024? Join me as I go through this game in 15 minutes, because you're in a hurry and I'm not that good at video games. We begin our adventure by picking our style and then our Pokemon, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose Charmander because I like the idea of a fire-breathing dragon. And then then we fight our rival, who of course chooses a Squirtle because he hates us. After our battle, we are thrust into a world of nostalgia. But not without some significant updates. The sprites obviously look amazing, but there's also 231 Pokemon from across generations 1 through 8, although generation 8 is really just Galarian forms. I go ahead and catch a Sandshrew because it's my favorite line of Pokemon, and then I catch a Noibat because I wanted to. And also it's one of the new typings in this game, which is the sound type. There's actually a couple new typings in this game to add some new flair to an old classic, and I'm kind of a fan of that. I catch a Slowpoke as well, because Slowpoke, well, I'm, I'm sorry. It doesn't take me long to get Charmander to level 16 to evolve into a Charmeleon, and I did want to showcase some of the sprite work in this game. It's actually incredible. The Pokemon centers, even without speed up, are pretty quick, which I really like, but you can speed up the game, and you can run indoors. We get to the first gym, which is a water gym, and something small that I really like that this game does is your you're not a voiceless character. Whoever you choose is your name. You're actually going to talk back to some of the gym leaders when they say weird and wild things. It's worth mentioning at this point that I'm not concerned about overleveling or using cheap tactics like smokescreen. To win a battle, I honestly shouldn't, but I do win and immediately I get put into another rival battle. And it's one of those rival battles that I wasn't prepared for, so I didn't heal up my team before we fought. Whoa, 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 shoot, where did you get a Porygon? It's a static encounter that I got a little while ago, but I didn't want to show you where it is because I want you to be able to explore this game on your own. I use cheap tactics again, like Sand Attack and Poison Sting to try to wear my opponent down, but it doesn't exactly work because even with minus six accuracy, he still hits a bone club. But even as Sandshrew goes down, the poison finally takes effect. We finish off the rest of the fight by using supersonic and leech life tactics, otherwise known as being completely cheap. In total honesty, I had not planned on catching a Hitmonchan, but he was in this one weird patch of grass, and I had to catch Pokemon anyway for an experience share, so I caught him, and I put him on the team, with the intention to replace him when I found something that I wanted to use more. I use an in-game trade to get a Lapras for my Clefairy, and I like this idea because in the original games, Lapras kind of comes a little bit too late. I pick up a keg of beer for less than a glass of lemonade and continue on my way. Another reason I really like this playthrough is that you can tell that they use some of the same assets, but they used it in different ways, and that was just kind of a cool blast of nostalgia for me. My Sandshrew evolves into a Sand Slash, and I face off against Lily, the Ice-type trainer. And well, she's an Ice-type trainer, and I have an overleveled Charmeleon, so it goes about how you'd expect until she pulls out her Lapras. And this is where we started to see something really strange. I have never seen so many critical hits in one playthrough of a game. I couldn't find anything in the docs that prove this, but I think some Pokemon are more prone to giving and receiving critical hits. Maybe I'm crazy, but let me know how it goes on your playthrough, because on mine, it was nuts. Lois is the grass-type Pokemon trainer, and there's nothing extraordinary here, but remember that Pokemon that I almost didn't add to the team? Well, it comes in clutch here. Not only hitting Comet Punch, but for like four to five times average. Another thing I really like about this game is how well thought out the gyms are. The puzzles are nothing extraordinary, but one thing that I really like that this game does that some of the more modern Pokemon games seems to shy away from, which is that I can face the gym leader whenever I enter the town and go into the gym. And I know that sounds strange, but have you played Heart Gold and Soul Silver? Look, I just want my side quests to feel like side quests and not some type of mandatory bullcrap that I have to do. And I'm not saying that this game isn't linear, it certainly is, but at least when I enter a town, I can choose what I want to do first. I face Sparky the Electric Gym Leader and I have an overleveled Sand Slash so it goes exactly exactly as you think it would. One thing I will say about this game is that item management is a pretty big deal, just it's pretty easy to solve if you're not an idiot like me, you just put your items that you don't want in a box, like TMs and stuff like that. Which on TMs, they are unlimited use, so you don't have to worry about burning up your sword stance. Level 36 happens soon enough, and we get our awesome fire breathing dragon. Giovanni is up to no good again in this region, and once again, it's up to a 10 year old to stop him. Again, I didn't look at the source docs, but I think they gave some Pokemon buffs because I've never seen 
seen Lapras do this well in any playthrough that I've ever had a Lapras in. And kind of the same thing goes for the other Pokemon that I use because at some points I'm pretty under leveled for the fights, but I still do all right. And overall, there just might be some balancing issues to work out, but you know, that kind of makes it like the first game. Speaking of like the first game, I need to go find my rival and get into a battle with him in a place where we definitely shouldn't be fighting, like, I don't know, a graveyard. I will admit to you that throughout this entire playthrough, I did not do a good job at learning what the new typings actually did. And sometimes that comes back to bite me, but when you've got an overpowered Lapras with Ice Beam and Surf, then really there is no issue that I can't overcome. I mentioned how the crits went wild in this game, right? Good. Do you remember how I said that this game was rather linear? Well, there's one route that you can go on where the Pokemon are actually pretty high leveled. And I go through a streak where I cannot get my Noibat to survive an encounter to save my life. It didn't seem to matter whether I put him up front, whether I put him in the middle, whenever I brought this Pokemon out, it was doomed to just die in the first move that happened, whether it was self-destruct. So eventually I was like, oh, I'll get smart. I'll switch him out for my Charizard. Self-destruct again. It was starting to remind me of this. In a weird, albeit kind of backwards way though, it did remind me of what it was like to rage at my Game Boy when I couldn't figure out how to get through Dark Tunnel. I know it's called Rock Tunnel, but you know, it was, it was dark in there, so. But have no fear, all that training that we did really, really paid off because our Noibat comes in with a vengeance and just starts knocking out every single one of these Pokemon. Forget the fact that I'm like eight to nine levels ahead of everybody. Porygon 2 comes in to finish him off and we wind up with our fifth badge in this region. And because he had overcome such trials and tribulations, our Noibat starts to evolve into a Noivern, and then I get the sinking suspicion that happiness actually didn't matter because I died way too many times for that to have been a thing. Globo Jim's competitor, the Average Joes, come in, and I fight the Average Joe. Or the normal Joe, as it is. The normal gym definitely isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. I had planned on getting rid of Hitmonchan sooner than this, but he was still pretty useful for the normal gym, so he's still on the team. Okay, I know, I know I get a lot of crits in this playthrough, but I'm pretty sure that I didn't need most of them. I get my normal gym badge, and do you remember when I said that this game was linear? Well, sort of. It turns out I actually skipped one of the gyms by complete accident, and actually this is the inside of a gym in this clip right here. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. I fight Sabrina's doll as one of the gym leaders, and I thought that was a, a really nice touch to put in there, and this game is actually super packed full of easter eggs. And I know that this playthrough must seem pretty spoiler heavy, but trust me when I say that I'm not even really scratching the surface on some of the stuff that's in this game. And at this point, you can kind of see why I think Porygon might be bugged with all the critical hits that he gets, or maybe it's the move Cyber Crush, I'm not really sure, but either way, I'm not going to stop using it. I go to the Safari Zone to look for subscribers because people that watch this channel don't necessarily subscribe. My Porygon 2 evolves into a Porygon 3, I mean Porygon Z. And then I fight a Power Ranger on my way to fight Giovanni for the final time. Our Porygon evolved just in time to defeat Giovanni pretty much by himself. It's gotta be hard to beat Giovanni, to continually be beat by 10 year olds. Imagine being a mob boss but just being unable to thwart the meddling of a 10 year old. Like, think, think about that for a second. I know that's the premise of a lot of Pokemon games, but like, where are the police? And if I'm fighting crime, doesn't that technically make me a vigilante? I, I don't know. We go to the Elite Four, and I'm not gonna lie, I get through this pretty much no problems, because I do take items with me to use after each battle, and I use revives after some of the battles too, because again, it's not a Nuzlocke. The first Elite Four member, I think, used to be a Power Ranger or something, but it's not, I'll be honest, I didn't really pay too much attention to the story. But I've got a Lapras and a Sand Slash, so I'm not too worried about anything that they throw out, and they don't really throw out anything that crazy anyway. But this is the perfect opportunity to talk about today's sponsor. But I did play Raid Shadow Legends, and I want to let you guys know that it's, it's honestly not that good. I mean, it's fine. The graphics are pretty good, but it's not... It is free to play, but if you use the free to play version, you're not going to get that far and it's definitely like pay to win type of gameplay. But to get real with you guys for a second, I was five years old when I got my first Game Boy Color, and the first game I ever got was Red Version. 
I remember my first team was a Charizard, a Raticate, a Pidgeot, a Nidoking, a Jolteon, and a Gyarados. I know, call me basic if you want, but I was five. And there's just something magical and untainted about that because everything is new. It's why I don't fault someone for liking their first generation of Pokemon. Of course they do, because everything's new to them. They're not jaded yet. The next Elite Four member is, I think, Koga's cousin or something? I, I don't really remember. And this fight is actually uh, almost exactly the same as the last one, except for instead of having to use two Pokemon, I really only have to use one because I do keep on getting critical hits again. Look, you can be mad that my Pokemon are getting a lot of critical hits, but maybe have we considered that my Pokemon just love me and want to do the best for me? And while this game may have its bugs, there are some things that I really enjoyed about this game, like the level progression. This game does have EXP share if you so choose to use it, and you can turn it off if you don't want it, that's fine. But this means that I didn't have to spend hours grinding. If I wanted to grind, I would just play Dragon Quest or Tony Hawk Pro Skate 2. But um, Next up, we have a fan favorite in the Elite Four member number three, Agatha. It's here that things start to get a little bit tricky, because the levels, if you'll notice, are not even anymore. In fact, most of the Pokemon from here on out are going to be over our level. In my original playthroughs, I think I lost to Agatha the most, because I couldn't separate the idea of the anime from the games. I refused to put a Kadabra or an Alakazam on the team because I saw the anime. I knew that Ghost beats Psychic. That's how it works. I didn't realize that they were even poison type to begin with, so I didn't even think about using my Nido King to use Earthquake. I think I just used Jolteon. And before we had Koga in the Johto Elite 4, we had Agatha, who also liked to poison things, and also liked to confuse things with her faster than the speed of light Golbat. It always felt like such a learning curve, because I could get through Lorelei pretty much no problems, and I could get through Bruno pretty much no problems. In fact, I originally thought that Bruno was just a joke of a character, because it never took me more than one try to get through him. But Agatha is where I would lose over and over again. And am I crazy, or does it look like Miss Magus in this sprite has a mustache? This Miss Magus actually causes some issues. Not only does it get a lot of critical hits, it also flinches my Pokemon. I do still have Hitmonchan on the team, but whenever I find a replacement, I'll let you guys know. In the end, she takes down more Pokemon than I'd really like her to, but I come out with the Charizard and a super effective Crunch to finish the deal. We get to the last member of the Elite Four here, Blanche, a supposed Dragon-type user, and she throws out a Rhydon. Because of course. Because why would someone who claims to be a Dragon-type user not come out with Dragon-type Pokemon? Am I crazy on this? Look, if you've made it this far into the video and you think Rhydon looks like a Dragon, leave it in the comments below, please. You might notice that during this fight, I used the speed up a little bit, and that's because it took me a few tries tries to beat this one. I didn't want to start the whole thing over because I did feel like I could beat her with this team, so I used the move Stubbornness, and it turns out it's super effective. A brief warning that I feel like I should give before you go ahead and download this game. During the editing process, I cut a lot of the moves down, not only to save time, but some of the moves have that Gen 1 black flash to them. It's only on some of the moves like Thunderbolt and Giga Impact, but if you are prone to seizures or you have sensitive eyes, then I would dim the brightness on your emulator a little bit. It's nothing as bad as that Porygon episode from the original anime, but I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Well, there you have it. I beat the- oh, wait, no. They lied again about the number four. And honestly, the rival- I, like, he wasn't easy, but I didn't have to reset, if that gives you any indication as to the difficulty of him versus the last person. I did keep Hitmonchan on the team for this fight, but, you know, there's always potential for a reorg later. I did want to take a second to just thank the Rainbow Dev team for putting this game together for the 20 anniversary of the ROM hack. For all the luck that I had earlier with the critical hits, it seems like my luck has finally run out because my enemy crits me two times in a row. And big crits too, because I had planned on using both Hitmonchan and Lapras for other Pokemon that he had. Luckily he goes for Sky Attack again, so I'm able to take him out. And that's another thing too, is that the AI in this game is not that intelligent, but you know, whatever. We look back to our humble beginnings as I launch Smokescreen into my opponent's face so that I can lower his accuracy enough to cheese the system. Oh, and it worked like gloves. That is to say that it, it really didn't work. He still got off a pretty powerful rock slide. I used this opportunity to set up on my Sand Slash with Sword Stance, thinking that, oh, he'll probably miss most of his stuff, and he still hits Earthquake. Which, I get, he's only minus four accuracy, but still. I know if I get Sand Attacked, I'm missing my next four moves. That's just a fact. But we make it past this Tyranitar, and I'm really starting to feel the levels now, because 
even though I'm plus four, my Earthquake does little to nothing. Now, I know it's not very effective, and that he's 11 levels higher than me, but still. One more hit, and we do get through the Galarian Weezing, and I'm pretty glad he didn't use Self-Destruct. Lucky for us, our rival's kind of an idiot and uses Super Fang instead of something that probably would have knocked us out, and we get off a super effective Earthquake. Our opponent sends out Leafeon, and this one's built a little bit different. And this move right here is why I think that the crits are a little bit broken, because Slash at this plus attack should have done more. But because it was a crit, I think it somehow did less than my normal attack would have done. Of course, when Leafeon decides to use Razor Leaf, it's enough to take me out. Luckily for us, remember how I said that the AI is not that smart? Well, he keeps on using Wood Hammer, which gives him a decent amount of recoil, so when I heal with a move like Moonlight, and he still uses the move Wood Hammer, then he knocks himself out. Throughout my journey, I was pretty lazy and refused to learn the new typings, but one type I did learn is that the sound type is super effective against water for some reason. And I'm really glad I learned that now. And of course, we end things with the crit. Now, I didn't do any of the post game for this game, but there is an expansive one. So if you like this video, make sure to check out this video. And hey, have a great day while you're at it.